Well, good Tuesday afternoon, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. Um, it's Taco Tuesday, and I hope all your taco dreams come true. So, let, let's be clear here. There ain't nothing going on but the rent. It's dead time. There ain't much of anything happening whatsoever. So we are, of course, dealing with not much is going on whatsoever. And um, that's just the way it is. So we're all scrambling to figure out what's what and who's who. The Cowboys told us originally we're, we're all in. We're all in and that they were going to be doing all kinds of things. And, you know, we're, we're about winning and this, that, and the other. And thus far, they really haven't done squadoos, you know. And what's actually happening now, and I don't know if you realize that you're being tricked at the moment. But what's happening now is the publications, the pro football focuses, the talking heads and things are now beginning to talk up the Cowboys. You know, before they kept talking about the Cowboys are terrible. They haven't done anything in free agency. They stink. Mike McCarthy is a bad coach. Dak is a bad quarterback. Their offensive line is in bad shape because they got rid of Tyron Smith and um, Biotish and stuff. Their defensive line, Mozzie, is, you know, terrible and this, that, and the other. But I was just seeing uh, Vosh with uh, Brian Brodus, and they say that the Cowboys have a top 10 defensive line. Well, edge rushers were pretty good, but I don't know that we're a top 10 defensive line interior-wise. But what they'll do now is they're going to convince you that everything that we missed, none of that matters, that we actually are a great team. That the ceiling for the Cowboys is way up there, even though they didn't do anything to compete and to change the narrative be that as it may. And we'll be talking about this more going forward and stuff because what always happens is there's the cycle of the Dallas Cowboys suck. They're chokers. Then we go through free agency. Cowboys haven't done anything. They're losers. They're, you know, off-season, you know, bottom-tier guys and so on. They go through the draft. The draft, you know, the, 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 what are they thinking? What are they thinking in the draft? They should have gotten this guy, that guy, and the other guy, and so on. They trash us, and then they pump us up by training camp. It happens every year. Regardless of that, this one is an interesting take from Andrew Brandt. Andrew Brandt seems to believe that the Dallas Cowboys are going to let all the contracts go through. I mean, just we're not going to do any of them. We're, you know, that, that basically Dak is the linchpin because signing CD and not having Dak, you're kind of like, you know, you're Minnesota right now. You got Justin Jefferson. You don't really have a quarterback. And I'm going to say, well, I tell you what, let me play the clip and I'll actually disagree with him a little bit here because I'm not going to say that he's got everything right on this, or at least from my perspective, I think that maybe some of it's wrong. They're going to let it ride. They're going to let it ride with Prescott. And that means let it ride with Prescott, let it ride with Lamb, let it ride with Parsons, and let it ride with Mike McCarthy. That's just the way I'm viewing the Cowboys right now because usually they jump in early in the offseason, they extend all these guys, they give them huge bonuses, and everything with Lamb and Parsons depends on Prescott to get the cap room. So I just th- so let me stop there. Wait a minute. The Cowboys don't ever jump up early and pay people. Zeke held out. D. Law had to threaten to not get his shoulder surgery after being franchise tag. Tony Pollard got franchise tag. Michael Gallup last year his deal. Amari Cooper actually was a free agent. Went to Washington. Came back. Got his deal. Um, I don't know where he got that they usually are doing. This is business as usual for the Cowboys. We're not getting free agents, and we're not paying anybody till we absolutely positively have to. But go on. I think this seems like a uh, roll the dice year for the Cowboys, and maybe it's a whole different look next year, but we'll see. What if they do let it ride, Andrew? What does that actually mean for the quarterback position next year? 
Well, it's only going up, as we all know. And the numbers for Prescott when he did it were 40 million a year. That was the market. Now it's 55. And we'll see what it is next year. I know people will say, well, he's not that good or what. Listen, it doesn't matter. You know, if you're that level and it's time, you're going to get the market. And I don't, if the Cowboys move away from them this time next year, there'll be plenty of suitors. It's just, you can't find free agent quarterbacks like Prescott. So whatever you think of Dak and compared to this quarterback or that quarterback, he's going to be paid. I don't think he's going to be a tag guy next year. So either. See, I'm like, wait a minute. Uh, Correct me if I'm wrong. And I, I mean no disrespect because Andrew Brandt, you know, he's a guy who's out there and stuff. I keep hearing people talking about we don't expect a tag next year. Of course we don't expect one because he's got a no tag in his clause. Don't y'all understand? So my question is, if you don't understand all the ins and outs of the contract because for a while we kept hearing that Dak Prescott was a 59 million dollar hit but it was like wait a minute people they restructured it to 55 million he also said in this that in order to do CD Lamb you have to get Dak done and that's not true CD Lamb would actually give you more cap room this year he's an 18 million dollar hit take a look at Justin Jefferson's deal okay Justin Jefferson was drafted in the same draft as C.D. Lamb, same year, um, further down the line, and you could take the $35 million contract for Justin Jefferson where this year is $8.5 million and it's $15 million next year. So I'm trying to understand, and then it's 38 the year after that, but we're talking about three years down the road. So I'm trying to understand... Am I the stupid one here? Do I, am I the one who doesn't understand the contracts and I'm missing something? Because if I can go from having $17.8 million for C.D. Lamb right now, and I can get his number down to 8.6 this year, and then next year his cap number is $15 million, right? 17 and 8 is 25 million he's 17 now 25 million for the first two years versus 17 this year and then you know having to franchise tag him next am i the fool but let me, oh that that's the end of it uh, and dax uh, and actually i will say i think that the cowboys and dak have an understanding that's just my thing because I think the Cowboys, they're looking at it. We're better off taking that $55 million right now, getting that out of the way, and then doing the contract, getting rid of 55, and then we're just dealing with that 40 over the life of the contract. In which case, at this point, here's the reality. We've been talking about $60 million for Dak since the end of the year. So we're still talking about the same number. The sixty million have we done did it four months ago? Is that going to be different than the sixty million now? And here's the other part of the equation. I believe I pointed out because the thing is, is we look at numbers, we look at numbers like they are the same year after year. Because the salary cap goes up, okay? Because the salary cap went up thirty five million dollars. The $55 million that Trevor Lawrence got this year is not the same as the $55 million that Justin Herbert got, excuse me, not Justin Herbert, um, uh, Joe Burrow got the year before. The percentage of the cap that was eaten up by Joe Burrow his first year was greater than the cap hit taken by Trevor Lawrence. And I think I pointed out, if we use the matrix... If we use the difference in salary cap and percentage wise, Joe Burrow's 55 is, I think, actually 59.5 million. I think is what I had. I have to go back and rework the numbers. But Dak Prescott getting, Dak gets 60. Basically, that's the same as what Joe Burrow got last year. 
And the reality will be is if it ends up being that the Cowboys get Dak Prescott a deal next year and it's 65 after the season, he has a great season, that's really the same as Joe Burrow got two years ago. I know it doesn't seem the way, same way, but the $40 million that Dak got paid before is now chump change as we all look at in comparison to what it was back then. Back then, we are like, oh, my God, you can't pay a guy $40 million. But Andrew is probably right. Cowboys probably will just ride this out because they like the drama. That's the way they are. All right, you good people. I will check with you guys later. Peace out.